It's commonly claimed that executives in the NHS knew exactly what Jimmy Savile was getting up to, but turned a blind eye and buried complaints from staff in order to keep the charity checks coming in. Whilst this is no doubt in part correct, the truth is likely far darker. That is that they knowingly facilitated his activities as part of a deep state endorsed trauma-based research network that Jimmy Savile was merely a public facing bagman for. This is why Savile had the run of the hospitals and the secure psychiatric prison of Broadmoor. It was for the purpose of MK Ultra style sexual and psychological experimentation to engender trauma upon the subject, which would then be fed back to the likes of Tavistock and the security services for continual monitoring. The Masonic Deep State seems to have deemed it necessary at some point to maintain a certain level of psycho-spiritual trauma in society in order to pursue their social engineering goals. And for such a purpose, individuals such as Savile, himself likely of a hidden aristocratic bloodline, were placed as fixers. This is what you need to bear in mind when you watch mainstream evaluations of his crimes which overwhelmingly will paint him as being some sort of evil genius arch manipulator, driven solely by his sordid sexual perversion and who by merit of his fiendish Machiavellianism fooled us all. Whereas I would venture at least that if he would have walked in front of a bus in 1958, the following years would have seen someone else performing the exact same role, no doubt in a slightly different fashion and bringing their own idiosyncrasies to the role, but with the same level of influence, same broader modus operandi, music presenter, TV star, charity fundraiser, friend to the rich and powerful, etc., and ultimately the same results yielded. Now we can take a look at the much repeated part of Savile Law, his habitual revealing of the method and hiding in plain sight. In the wider mainstream, this is always painted to be some sort of ingenious self-defense mechanism, which it no doubt in part was an effective way of dealing with no smoke without fire, murmurings. Oh, that's just Jimmy, he's always saying this kind of thing. But what if there was also a darker, more esoteric motive here, the nature of which has Tavistock's dabs all over it? Savile told the general public over and over and over what he was all about throughout his 50 years career in the public eye. What this does on a subconscious level is make the viewer, the general public, the wider culture, somehow complicit in his crime. Literally, any discussions of Savile will have people left, right and centre claiming, oh, we all knew. Well, if that's the case, his flaunting of the fact, in the sort of dark esoteric belief system of the elites, makes the viewer not only aware of his crimes all along, but to essentially have consented to them. So if the wider society knew all along, then they are, in some esoteric sense at least, an accomplice to the fact. It's typical tricksterism that we see all over the modern elites. The revealing of the method, and perhaps with Savile, the ending was always embedded into the role. The post-death reveal of his crimes and ultimately our cultural complicity. Here was a man who was fated by the peak of our society. A sir, an OBE, a knight of Malta, a papal knighthood holder who our favourite pop stars, celebrities and royalty pals around with, who children wrote letters to, often addressed as Uncle Jimmy, a man who is at the heart of the wider British cultural landscape all the way from the boomers to the millennials. And the great reveal is that he is a pathological child rapist, satanist and probable necrophiliac. How's that for the manipulators hitting the jackpot of cultural demoralisation? What faith can you have in your wider institutions and culture that allowed such a man to operate for so long and with impunity? Especially when the revelation brings a nationwide, well, we all knew, reaction. So we knew, but we accepted our powerlessness and tacitly at least allowed evil to be carried out against the weak for 50 years. This kind of cultural demoralization is stock in trade of the social engineers, presumably to break the backbone of the country and tear down the old order in place for new. Given what we know about the deep state behavioural psychologists and their crisis management contingency teams, they surely would have known what was coming in the wake of Savile's demise. Perhaps in the case of Jimmy Savile, they planned it this way all along.